Hi there, my name is Kayleigh and today I'm going to show you how to paint an elephant in watercolours. Um, it's a really, really simple process and I'm going to break it down into how to draw along with me um, and you'll be able to draw an actual elephant. You'll then go through step by step on how to paint it using what colours, colour mixing, using wet on wet technique and the wet on dry technique in order to achieve um, this elephant here. Um, so this is it. Um, He's really, really detailed. Um, he's got lots of cool colours kind of shining through and we've got a bit of a, a watery background, which is nice as well. Um, so all you'll need is um, a few materials. I've kept it as simple as possible in order um, for everyone to be able to take part. No matter what kind of watercolour set you've got, what kind of brushes you've got, you should be able to do this, I promise. Um, so what I've got in front of me is a little Windsor Newton palette. Um, the main colours that you need are uh, Burnt Umber, which is your dark brown, and an ultramarine, ultramarine blue, um, which is kind of standard blue that you get in most kits. Um, and everything else is completely optional. We're not using any black, we're not using any greys. You're going to be able to mix your grey from those colours, um, which is quite exciting because the first thing you want to do when you see an elephant is just put on a Payne's grey over everything. But I'm going to show you a different way to do that. Um, it's a great one because we learn how to leave areas blank like the tusks, um, but also darken down some areas to get them really, really dark without using that black as well. Um, the only brush that you'll really need to use is one kind of like round brush. I hope you can see that okay. Um, and it's just, it's got a good point on it. This is the number nine. It is really cheap. It's not anything fancy at all. So you should be able to do it with that as well. Um, and I've just got a pencil, a rubber, a jar of water and a bit of kitchen roll in front of me as well. Um, so I'm going to turn my camera around and I hope you enjoy. So we're going to start off by drawing the elephant and how we're going to do that is just pull it together using some shapes. Um, so whenever you've got a reference image, you can always break it down just looking at what shapes everything is. Um, so for example, I'll just draw my reference image, um, you could as well. And I'm just noticing first off that there's an almost semi-circle round here for the top of the elephant's head. Um, it then kind of comes down into a rectangle down like here. Um, and then those sort of join up on the sides and you've got your trunk coming down. Um, so I'm going to draw that in first just so that I can mark out where the head of my elephant's going to go. Um, so let's start off just about here. And I just draw lots and lots of lines until I get the, the one I'm looking for. Um, and then rub out all the ones I don't need. With watercolours, um, your pencil lines will show through. So try and be as light with your pencil as possible. You could use like a hard pencil, like a, a 3H, 4H, and it's much lighter. Um, or you can just lean lighter with your, your normal HB pencil. I'm using a normal HB school pencil here. Nothing fancy whatsoever. Um, next, we are going to pull down a rectangle, which is quite a bit shorter than our semicircle at the top here. I'm going to bring that down about there. Um, and then I've noticed the side of the face sort of goes round like that. And the side here is a lot smaller um, like that. Now the tusks come out of either side here. So you can mark those in. And you're just looking for, you go, kind of pointing this way. So it almost points down the way it comes out and then it points down the way on this side. Um, whereas the one here comes in more of a curve, kind of banana shape, um, down from this side like that. And it crosses over the trunk, but it's in line with the bottom of that tusk. So both, tus both tusks are about the same bit down, same distance down. And then I'm going to put in my trunk. Um, so if you actually look at the scale of the elephant's head, from the top of the elephant's head to the bottom of that rectangle of what we've got in, um, in terms of size, it sort of fits twice into the elephant's body. Um, so that's actually one, two, three, it's almost a third of it. Um, so when you're marking it in, I would now just start marking in roughly the sizes of the body and that way you'll know where, how long the trunk is. 
Um, so if this is this size, just using your pencil to measure, um, so that comes to about there, just bring that down, it's about there, we'll put a wee line, and from, let's remeasure, there to there, and this is going to be the bottom of our elephant feet. Um, so let's get our pencil, we'll just measure it to there and see how far down the body goes. Oh, so the body's just a little bit further down than this line here. Um, so you could almost mark that in a little bit like that. And you'll see the trunk comes down just that wee bit further. So you're probably talking about the trunk coming down to about, about there. And then you this bit's all feet. Um, so I'm going to just take the trunk all the way down. this and it sort of curves at the bottom and then it gets a wee bit thinner at the bottom then bring it all the way up here underneath the tusk like that now don't worry too much about measuring if if you're not quite getting the measuring you can always do it by eye um, I think it's just always handy to get a wee bit of proportions um, like that um, by marking them in So we'll rub out some lines just so it doesn't look too too messy just right now since the watercolour won't cover it. Um, so this was a line of where the bottom of the elephant is, so that's marking in where this line is here. And that's almost like the, the bottom of the body. Um, so we're going to mark that in like that. And then this leg, so this leg here comes all the way up to just at the bottom of where the ear's going to sit. So we're going to take a line right the way down and down to this line here, because this was the bottom of our elephant. Um, and the wee foot just sort of kicks out of the bottom. It's almost like it's wearing flares. And bring that right up. For now, we're going to have ears covered in that and things, but it's always good just to mark it in. Like that, there we go. Um, this leg here it comes right under the trunk, so actually what you could do is just draw it in down towards the trunk. Um, and a little bit shorter, so it sort of comes out like that. There we go. And just rub out any lines you don't need as you go along. Um, we'll take this one out now, we've got a good guide. And it comes all the way back up um, to right underneath there. Like that. That's just got the height of our elephant in, so we now know if it's not fitting on your page, um, then now is the time to, to start moving things about if you need to, because um, this is going to be the main height, and then we've just got a bit of width with our ears. Um, so maybe time to regroup if you need to. Now, get some new back legs in. So the back legs um, sit a little bit further up than the front legs here, um, so probably about there. And you see a little bit of this one, and there's a small gap and a little bit of this one here and you can just rub that wee bit in the middle and that keeps them nice and even you can always draw a negative space as well so negative space is this bit in here what's in the background so you can always check that that's that's looking right compared to the picture as well i'm going to make that wee bit wider at the top now that i've looked at my negative space Okay, let's get these ears in. So the ears come out, they're a little bit, let's do this one first. Um, it's quite a bit taller than the actual top bit of the head and it comes up, down, um, and it's got a wee point out. So let's have a look at where relatively that sits on our elephant's head. Oh, well, that's that's perfect, isn't it? Look at that straight line across. So the point of this ear crosses where the eyes are and a point here. So let's pop in our eyes first off then, because that'll work as a guideline for us. So the eye sits just a little bit further down than where we had our semicircle there. I'm going to do one eye roughly there and one eye there. And that's all we need just now. We'll have more detail later on. Put a little marking in where those are. And it means you can then pull a line coming right out. And let's get those points in the right places. So you're going to start just bringing this up, down, and they're quite big, into a point, and then that comes down like that. And then this one, it comes out, it's not quite as tall, a little bit shorter, it's out a wee bit further as well, into a point, 
and then it comes down a wee bit of a curve there down and it lines up with the bottom of the face here now that was just my first shot putting that in i might have a wee look now and see if there's anything i need to change i think actually i'm going to bring it down a little bit further on either side and maybe bring it in just a little bit like that there we go happy over that and just rub it any lines that you don't need as well and we get rid of that middle line as well where the point is skinny just now so we still need to get the body on and the body comes up so this is the back of it sort of comes up like this and round to the back um, and there's a little bit on this side as well that you see coming down there there we go now our last little bits we need to rub out um, are any bits here that are overlapping um, and most importantly, these lines here. We don't really need these ones in anymore. And this one, join in the trunk. Okay. Now, remember um, that you will be able to, to see every pencil line through your watercolour. Sometimes that works really well. Um, it's nice to see little bits of texture, um, but sometimes you don't want to see it at all, and actually you want less of a line than you have currently. Um, so you could always take a rubber to this and just sort of go right the way over the top, keep it all really light, um, so that you've only got a really faint line. I'm gonna leave mine reasonably heavy, just so that it's visible on the video. Um, for our watercolour practice. Um, but yeah, here we go, we've got the outline of an elephant. So I'm going to add in just a wee line where the background sits as well. Um, but there, you can put anything you want in the background to be honest. And about there. And that's us drawing our elephant. So for adding our watercolours, the only uh, materials I'm going to be using um, there's only a few of them. I've got this little watercolour palette. Um, it's very standard that you can buy. I think they're about a tenner um, and it's a Winsor & Newton one and it's got all the main colours that you need. Um, so you might notice there's not actually a grey or a, a black in this um, but we are going to paint our whole elephant not using those colours. Um, we're going to use mainly our Burnt Umber and our Ultramarine Blue. So if you've got those two colours in your palette you should be able to do this no problem. Um, I've got just a standard paintbrush, this is a really cheap one, it's a number nine round paintbrush. I'm going to do the majority of my elephant in that. Um, and I've got a, a bigger one as well just to do my background, um, any sort of big brush will do. And I've got some water and some kitchen roll as well just to keep us going. I have plenty of water nearby, lots of clean water. So to start off, um, I'm just going to wet the main elephant surface and what we're going to do um, is have in, in fact we'll just do this little, let's do this ear first off, um, there we go, and we're going to wet the colours that we need, so we need to add a wee bit of water to our ultramarine blue, you can do this in a separate palette as well, I'm just going to keep this as simple as I can for you, um, so that you can see everything, I'm just going to wet the brown like this, adding some water to it, um, and make sure the blue is nice and watery as well. And then we're just going to add in a nice base wash for our elephant. Um, so I'm just dipping in to the blue and putting a little bit of coverage on that. Nice and light, keep everything really light. Um, and this is called wet on wet. So you've already got a wet base and you're adding your wet paint to it. Um, add in a wee bit of brown as well. Um, and we're just going to watch those two colours sort of blend together as they dry. Oh, so that's enough for your first base. That's that's absolutely great to just have that in um, initially before we move on. Um, next up, I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna wet the whole area of the elephant's face. Okay, get that nice and wet. 
And the most important thing you can do is avoid adding any water to the tusks. So the tusks we need to keep white um, in order to keep white on it. The white of the page is the only way you can add white to a watercolour using only watercolour paints. So you want to make sure that that stays uh, with no water on it and therefore you will keep it white. So I'm just going to add on a bit of blue. And a wee bit of brown. And you'll see those bleeding in. And the whitest part of the whole picture is the tusks. There's not really any massive highlights that need to stay white. Um, normally if there are, you need to be a wee bit more careful with these colours going on. But really, this is such a light base that even this will do um, for, our, if, for any light bits as well. Okay. Now, if you feel it's getting too dark, um, you can always add a wee bit more water and dilute it down a little bit. So you're starting to see the colours that these make blended together, um, and that is a grey colour. And this is how we're basically going to do our whole elephant. Um, so let's wet this ear as well. At the moment, it doesn't matter if some of the colours blend in from the face to the ear and ear to the body as long as those tusks are kept white. Just wet this whole back bit as well. Um, and you can just pause the video to spend a bit of time doing this. I'm obviously working quite fast, um, but you can take your time with it. Keep those blues on. Add more water to my brown, just so it's nice and watery. And most elephant, oh, got a wee bit in the tusk. If you do that, try and just rub it off as quickly as possible. You can either use um, your finger, a clean brush, or um, some kitchen roll. And a wee bit more brown there. I'm not really looking at my reference image too much just now because, as I say, this is just the light, the light dusting to start us. Let's add a wee bit of water coming down here into the legs, and try and make sure you stay in the lines of the legs as well. You don't want it going into your background too much because um, it will be hard to cover brown and blue. Is our first layer done so we've got this lovely meld of all the blues and the browns all coming together um, and while you're waiting on that drying let's add in a little bit of background um, so you could start with your uh, sky so the sky is is blue <laughs> I'm sure you know that um, but you want to keep it really really light because we want our elephant to be the standout one um, so if you wanted to just almost wet this add some wee hints of blue um, here and there then that's quite nice as well. And because it's blue, if it blends into your elephant a little bit, it's all right. This is our first layer. We're okay with blending. Oh, come here. If you're wanting to do clouds, a little technique is to just dab your kitchen roll over wherever you've got some clouds. Uh, for this sort of area under here, we're going to go for a greeny colour. Um, so just add some water to whatever green you want to use. This is a sap green. Um, again, not too worried about it. All sort of blending together down here. It's really light. You can hardly see it. Make sure it's really watery for that first layer. And just in between the legs there. And 
I'm going to use a burnt sienna um, for this bottom bit. It's quite ready, um, and a burnt sienna is a red, ready brown. I'm so messy with my water. It goes everywhere. I just embrace it. I think that's the joy of watercolour is everything sort of blending and being a bit mad. And again, if the brown gets mixed in, it's all right um, just now. Normally, if we're doing totally different colours on the background, I'd be like, let it dry. Um, but that's fine just now. Now, what you should be doing is masking tape and down your picture, but um, just due to space and filming, I can't really do that. Um, but this will do. And it's just an example to show you how to do it. Um, but do try and mask and tape right the way around your picture. So I just let that dry for a little bit there. Um, and now we're gonna go in and do our second layer. Um, so if it's still a wee bit damp, don't worry too much, we're okay um, at this stage. This isn't our precise stage. This is just adding in our second layer. Watercolour is all about the layers. So we want to keep adding to it until it's all how we're looking, looking for it to be. Um, so for this stage, we want to be looking a little bit closer at where the blues and browns are starting to show through. Um, we want to mix one together as well. Um, so how to mix is just add a good dollop of water in here. If you've got a pipette you can use it um, but you know the brush holds enough. You don't need all fancy art materials to do this. Um, and we're going to add a bit of blue. Clean your brush and then add a bit of brown and just give that a mix together. So you're starting to see this grey colour come in. And if it's too bluey add a wee bit more brown. If it's too browny add a wee bit more blue. Um, there we go. So we've got this lovely grey colour. Can make it a wee bit darker. Let's add a wee bit more of each colour in. There we go. I'm quite happy with that. That's quite close to what our elephant is. Um, so I'm going to keep that nearby and I'm going to keep my blue and my brown as well. Um, let's pop it under there while we work on our ear. So we're going to work the same way again. Let's work our way across. Um, and just having a look, there's lots of brownie shades sort of shining through here, whereas this side is a lot more blue. Um, so where you can, try not put black on your picture with watercolours. Um, and try and look for all the different shades you can see. There's actually little ready shades coming through as well, which we'll add in as well. Um, so this time I'm going in wet on dry. So I've not wet the page first. I'm just going straight in with really watery paint. And I'm starting to spread it out into a pattern of how I see the ear here. So you're just having a look and you're thinking, hmm, this is all quite dark. So I'm going to take these blues up and keep it quite dark here. Um, you may have some little greys coming through at the bottom. And if you're using enough water on your brush and it's wet enough, and well, damp really, um, they should all blend really nicely together. Um, and what I want to see is these lines when it dries, this is what's going to add depth to our picture. So we do want to see some of these lines coming through like this. I'm going to move over to this side and this side's a wee bit more browny I would say. Um, so I'm going to start with my brown and bring in a little bit of shape. There we go. I'm going to have all these lovely lines all drying in and you'll get to have a bit of, bit of texture. And I'm going to grab a wee bit of grey and just pop that on there because you'll see that this bit's a little bit darker. Um, right, okay, sorry, I've moved on to the face. I'm getting too excited. I'm like, oh, I want to move on to the face. So I'm adding in this little sort of eyebrow bit round about his eye. Um, we've got the darkness coming down here. Um, and that's just with the grey. And then just bring some of your colours across. You'll see there's lots of texture at the top here. So we want to be adding on some greys. Um, and this is really just using your initiative. Use, let your skills sort of shine through and where you see different parts. You'll see it totally different to me. Um, 
but you want to, the, the main thing that I'm teaching you right now is just to work wet on dry um, and embrace all these lovely lines that are going to be left afterwards. Um, so you're going to start to see these ears drying in and you'll, you'll know what I mean. Um, so let's bring that in like this. And our trunk is a lot darker on this side. Um, so I'm going to bring that down. The one thing I'm not going to worry about just now is all these little lines coming across and the wrinkles and the wrinkles on the legs and things as well. We're going to leave that um, for one of our last layers where we actually add those in. adding in some blue colours. If you find it's looking too dark, just add a wee bit of water to it. Um, I don't want to lose the blues and the browns coming through. Although you've mixed a grey, you don't really want to just make everything grey um, or it'll lose, lose certain aspects. There we go. Um, and right, right in here is really quite dark. Um, so this is going to need a few layers. So a tip is don't go straight in mega dark just because that is a dark area. Um, you want to go still go in quite watery, but um, just add more layers. Okay, and then this leg, it's a bit darker all the way down this side. This. And this back leg. Go. So just work your way around all the different areas, adding in wee bits of blue, um, wee bits of brown. Okay. Add a wee bit of brown on this side as well, especially at the bottom here. And you'll have some mixing on the page as well. So as much as you mixed your grey on the palette, um, you will have some bits that have mixed on the page, um, which is lovely. Again, another joy of watercolour. This wee bottom bit needs a wee bit of brown. I think mine's is a wee bit chubbier than the one that I'm, the one in the bitch. I've just realised this is this is quite round. So maybe we just had a good meal. Let's go for that. Um, and this bit up here is quite dark um, underneath. Just make sure you're missing out the tusks, keeping them white. Um, but still going right round the edges. That went on quite dark. Didn't mean to put as much paint on that. We want to keep it waterier than that. So if in doubt, just add more water. And we'll let that dry in. A bit blue. Oh, look at that bleed out. It's really nice. And add a bit more water again. Oh, it's leaking into the trunk a little bit. That's okay for this stage. We're okay with that. Bring that over. Right, I'm going to let that dry for a couple of minutes and um, just let it all soak in. So that's us let it dry again. One of the main things you need to learn about watercolour is the patience to let it dry. Um, so do know when to stop and stand back. Um, and then once it's dry and you've walked away from it for a little bit, you do start to notice other things that you maybe want to change um, next time round anyway. So I'm kind of looking at this thinking, oh, how could I change? This is looking awful light, whereas everything else is a little bit darker. Um, round the edges of my, my ear need to be a wee bit darker as well. It's a good time to reflect. Uh, so again, this next stage, exactly the same as the last one, except we're going in again on top. So we want to keep lots of these lovely lines coming round and let them stay there, but add more on top. And the more layers you've got, the more texture, the more depth you're going to see in your picture. Um, so I'm going to start off, I'm just going to give my grey another little mix up here. Yeah, I think it needs a wee bit more blue in it. So I'm going to add in just this darkness coming up here with another layer of paint um, and get that nice and dark um, with the grey. 
tray on top. You don't want to lose the blue again. Make sure you're still keeping that in there. Um, it might just be a case of you want to, to darken down some bits like this. More layers. Um, so this side is quite dark, so we're going to go over with another layer coming down this side of the head um, and another couple of wee bits over the top here. Um, I think that bit's nearly done. We've got lots of texture there already. Add in that wee eyebrow again. Um, bring it down under the eye. That darkness. And you can go over the eye as well if you want, but we'll do that at the, one of the last stages. Got another wee layer at this bit. Round about. Bring that right down. So I'm mainly using my grey in this one. Um, I will go in with a wee bit of blue and brown. Um, but this one... There's still a lot of grey needs to be added. And you'll know yourself, you might see that everyone's looking a bit brown. If everyone's looking a bit brown, get, get some more blue in there. You get these lovely bright bits of blue shining through. Cool. So I've now gone round the outside. And when you use wet on dry, the good thing is you get these lovely crisp edges coming through. Um, which you don't always get with wet on wet. It's more blended. go over it with as many layers as you think. Um, I'm not worried too much about the crinkles in the ears yet. Again, we'll do that afterwards. Um, this is more just getting in the darkness. Let's just darken this down a little bit. Um, right under here is really quite dark. And under here as well. I'm just working my way around my picture, thinking of what I can do next. really enjoying doing this actually. It's looking it's starting to look the way I want it to. Oh, not enough water on that. Make sure your brush is always damp. Pull that up a wee bit. Um gonna add a wee bit more blue on this side as well. I feel like it's a wee bit too browny. Too much grey and brown. And just start adding in wee bits that you need to to just darken it down. And make sure you know when things are drying, you know that that line is going to be there. Um, and that's good. Sometimes you really want the line. Sometimes you maybe don't want the line that you've got in. Just always try and keep on top of that if you can. Um, obviously, you need to work quite fast with watercolour. Unless you're working weight on weight. Just keep, keep adding water if in doubt. If you feel like you need a bit longer to work on something, you can just keep adding water. And it should keep it active, reactive. Can't think of what that word is. Um, yep, and then just adding in any more little bits that you think. Oh, we need to get those in there. We've not done trunk. We need a second layer in the trunk. Bring that up. This bit in here is quite dark. Um, And I'm going to add in this wee shadow underneath the tusk here. And try and get it as close as you can. Every layer gets more and more like it. Until eventually, on our last layer, we're going to have a looking spot on. 
Okay, now while we're letting that dry, I think I'm going to stop round about there. Um, we've got another layer or two to go, um, but what I'm now going to do is just add in a few more details in our background. Um, so you can get your big brush out again if you want. Um, you could add in another, another little layer if you need to, if you want it to be a wee bit darker than it currently is. I'm going to add in a wee bit more on the ground here um, with this burnt sienna. another wee layer on um, and then I'm going to add in a wee bit more green as well um, and I'm just pushing the paint about a little bit just now not really too worried about it all bleeding together um, my main focus is my elephant and I want to keep it that way always add some yellows and um, even some blues as well if you wanted. Um, I'm going to be quite abstract with mine, just dab my brush in oh, and get some darker bits and lighter bits all shining through. Gives it some texture. Make sure you don't forget that wee bit in there as well. And try and avoid having too much of a glow round about your, your elephant, so bring the background right up close. Um, to all bits of the elephant here um, or it just looks a bit odd if you've got kind of white bits you need to use a smaller brush please do I'm going to just get right in there and then pull it out so it doesn't look like a line either last thing you want is a big green line going all the way around We've got, um, kind of where we're sitting just now with our elephant is we've got, the, oh, do you know what I've not done? I've not done the floor there. Let's, let's get back to that. There we go. Take that up there. more paint or anything please do there we go that looks better um there's gonna be a shadow in there anyway so i'm not too worried about it looking a bit too dark um yeah so for this time round and um, we're going to do another layer on the elephant and we need to look out for where our highlights are and just make sure you're not going over those too much um so at the moment i've already i've still got my highlight coming down the side of my um, my trunk there i've got some on either side of the the feet as well and the body the really big body there all my ears i've still got these light patches shining through so just make sure you keep those there um, and try and keep your tusks as as crisp as you can um <laughs> detail isn't my biggest thing so um sometimes they don't look quite as crisp as i want them to you can always add a wee bit of water um, and sort of dab it off if you do feel like something's run too much go so you can if in doubt kitchen roll helps okay so back to my brush if you want to use a smaller brush again so if you wanted an even thinner one you can this one's got a good point on it and i'm used to using quite a big brush so i'm going to carry on using this one um but if you've got any you want to to change to to get these little tiny details please do um so this layer we want to get in all our little wrinkles um little bits around the ear these are our most important parts for this this stage and this could be our last layer we'll see how it goes um so let's just see the top of that again i'm gonna go around the outside i'm just gonna pull little bits in to get that crinkly look this. and try not to be too uniform about it um, you want them all looking a little bit jagged um, you want some of them to blend in, you want to keep some harsher. Same on the other side, um, I'm going to take a few of these up like this. There we 
There we go. And if you feel like some bits need more um, definition, then you can do that at this stage as well. This is about the little neat bits now. Um, we're getting into the nitty gritty of everything. And add in a few wee, few wee bits. Be as artistic as you like. Get that creativity flowing. Um, and then round about the tusks. So the tusk kind of comes down like this. Yeah, and this bit's all a lot darker. So the majority of this layer is going to be in your grey. Um, because you'll have done most of the groundwork with your blue and your brown. And the majority of this one is just going to be in the grey now. Seeing that is still just a mix of the blue and the brown. And let's get that wee eyebrow in again. Bring it down and underneath. I need to get that shadow back in if it's kind of disappeared. And I'm going to darken this bit down again. So I've got a bit of definition between um, the background and my trunk. Bring this underneath. Now for the wrinkles in the leg, um, we're going to just move our brush in this sort of motion and get some of the highlights as well. And remember your painting is an interpretation, it's not a photograph, we're not looking for exact details, um, we're doing it in a painting manner, so don't be too hard on yourself, it's not going to look exactly the same as a photograph, it shouldn't, it should look like your own. Um, but just go back and forth, leave some of them a wee bit heavier than others. There we go, and we're starting to get those wrinkles coming through. And add this wee dark bit up here. And for the trunk, we're going to do the same as we did for the leg wrinkles. You're going to have some wee bits sort of coming across. Like this. And then this bit is a lot darker. Because it's sort of shined, it kind of goes round. Just add in a few here and there. You don't want to go overboard with it either. If you go overboard, it'll just look too, um, like an outline of a pencil or something. You can darken down the eyes if you need to. It might take a few layers to get those just right. Um, there we go. And I think I'm going to basically stop there. I'm quite happy with that. Know when to stop as well. It's always important to know when to stop. Um, yeah. So the only thing left I've got to do is put in our little shadow underneath to make them look a wee bit more grounded. Um, and all I'm going to do is mix a little bit of what I had on the ground, um, which was my burnt sienna with a little bit of my burnt umber. Darken it down a little bit. And I'm just going to pull these out from under the feet. Like that. And a wee bit in here as well. And just bring those out. There we go. You can be as precise with that as you want. Um, you could be actually doing the whole elephant silhouette if you wanted. Um, it is a cast shadow, so it'll be a little bit longer. I'm just doing mine as a, a bit of a broad, a broad way of doing it. You can add in more details in the, the background if you want. Um, be quite loose about it. You could even use some sort of brownie shades as well if you wanted to have a few shining through. Um, a bit brown. To add a wee bit brown on that side as well. And just avoid that outline look if you can. And there we go. 
um, and our elephant is finished. Um, there we go, move that up there so you can see. But um, I'm really happy with that. I hope yours look good as well. I would love to see them if you want to pop them in the comments.